Covering the High Plains with news, weather, and information. From TV23 Studios in Sublet, this is High Plains Today. Hi, everybody. Welcome to this special edition of High Plains Today. I am joined today by, and she's very special, she's a good friend, and we like her a whole lot. She is Adrian Belinsky. She is an award-winning motivational speaker <laughs> and author. How's that for a pump? Are you talking about me? Yes. Wow, that's impressive. Yes, good to see I you. I have to pinch myself. It's nice to see you, too. I, I always like talking I to like you. I like being home. You are it's home. Nice. You are I'm home, home. here in Sublette. You grew up in what you call small town, which is liberal. And I suppose, you know, you live in Denver now. So, yeah, liberal small town. Yeah, it is. But I'm, I'm on tour right now with Keisha. You and are. We've been in some small towns. Yeah, yeah you, okay. liberals, liberals the metropolis compared been, to a few no, places we've you were, been. You've been in Dodge City. You've Dodge. Been in, okay, you were in Ellis. That's small. Ellis. We were in Iola. Iola small. Beloit. That's small. Yeah, we did a stop, uh, a stop in Alma. Okay. Do you know where Alma is? Yes, it's up by Hoisington. What about Norton? Norton is north of that. Hey. It's up by Ross. I'm, I'm out impressed. Once in a while. Okay. I once in All a right. while. Yeah. All right. So. <laughs> You are on tour with Keisha because, you know, the last time you were here, well, you and I at Pancake Day, and we talked a lot about your book. We did. Blood, Sweat, and Tiaras. Correct. I got it right, didn't I? You did. And I did you start it. Correct. I didn't finish it, but I, I did start it. Anyway, we talked a lot about that, and after you were Miss Kansas, and you were, you traveled with the USO troop, and all this stuff, and you were in New York, and you came back, and you were at the Texas, the Grand whatever in in uh, Paladuro Canyon correct and you had your accident yes almost lost your foot yes and so that's all the book stuff and we talked all about it. yes go back on Facebook you can find that episode right and they can yes. learn all that it's actually on my website oh, okay and it's on our website You're, too he, he, Chris is on my website com. yep click uh, on videos yeah. and you'll see the two of us having a good time talking about the book so you can do that but now let's talk we didn't get into a lot about your speaking and no and and that's the main thing i mean that's the main thing you do it is and you are now this is the second time you've made a kansas swing oh uh, yeah a, a week, big one a, yeah a big one uh so i've been in kansas for it will be two weeks it'll be two weeks by the time i yeah. go home i've yeah. kind of lost track of time is today wednesday yes oh actually today's friday because it's, it's friday. airing on friday yes, yes. <laughs> Sorry. See, she doesn't know. <laughs> Oops. Anyway. Um, but yes, I am making a tour and I have built a program. My, my program started the year that I was Miss Kansas and that's how I was introduced into the speaker's world because that's what you do. But it kept coming back and finding me. And I've, it's been 12 going on 13 years ago that I was crowned Miss Kansas. And ironically, I am really pursuing what my original platform was built on when I was coming out of college. Now, it has changed and it has developed on a much grander scale, but I still, I love working with teenagers. And the bulk of what I do is I go in and I teach kiddos how to have self-confidence because it doesn't just happen. I know even for you and I, it didn't just happen. Uh, I'm not sure I have it yet. But well, anyway. and then and then I give them the know-how so that they can actually overcome adversity because we're all hit with it. And I tie that back. Everything is tied to a story so that it's memorable. I tell them when I come in, I don't care if you do not know my name when I leave. My job is to make sure that you know these. I give them four choices they get to make in life to find success. And I'm more focused on making sure they know these choices versus who I am when I come and go. All right. Does that help? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, is that really confusing? No, because, I mean, you were Miss Kansas in 20... 2005. Five. Okay. Yeah. A while right. ago. Well, yeah. Yeah. All the students but, I work with, I ask them, they're the between... Oh, uh, yeah, and they probably weren't born yet, were <laughs> they? They were, they were between, in 2005, they were between the age of one and six. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm, and I'm kind of their parents' age, but I like to think that I'm the fun aunt that has, that has something good, some good, valuable advice to give them. Okay, so when you developed, I mean, yes, when you're in the Miss Kansas organiz organization, and especially when you are Miss Kansas... 
I mean, you're everywhere all the time. Yeah. For a year, that's all you do. Correct. Go, go, go. Speak, speak, speak. Snap, snap, snap. Smile, smile, smile. Correct. So that's what kind of got you, led you into all this. Yes. So. But I have found how to be much more authentically me and more vulnerable than you feel when you are also representing an organization that is now approaching 100 years old. So it, it, it allows me a whole lot more freedom. And one of, the, one of the things that students really tell me is, we appreciate how real you get with us. You don't sugarcoat things. And I'm like, well, this is real life. Okay, so, so that's, where you're, that's where you're kind of bringing in the vulnerability as in, uh -huh. in the Miss Kansas organization, in the Miss America organization. I mean, when you're out, you are representing da -da, the platform and the organization. Uh, yeah, two for the price of one. Yeah. And you still have this image that you are trying to, on some levels, meet because it's the Miss America program. And it, it's a multifaceted position. Now I get to go, instead of being Miss Kansas, nobody knows your name, I get to go be Adrian and share a very heartfelt message that I had to fight to learn uh, on my own. And, and I dive into my accident and the deep, dark places that you go when life gets really tough. And I relate yeah. it to things that kids are going through today. Okay. So they can right. grasp a hold of it. All right, so hold that thought. We're going to take a quick break. Are we already through the first segment? Well, yeah, it's been, yes. Oh, goodness. All right, so hang on to that because when <laughs> okay. we come back, I want to delve into a little more of how you developed you okay. know, your platform as to what you're going to present to these kiddos when you're out talking to them. All right? Sounds great. All right, stick around. Adrian and I will be right back. You're watching High Plains Today on TV23 with host Chris Jewell. TV23's internet service and 4G live streaming provided by United Wireless. Coverage you deserve. Service you expect. United Wireless. Hi, Chris Jewell, host of High Plains Today, a 30-minute news and information program that airs weekdays at noon right here on TV23. We talk about news, we talk about sports, we talk about weather, we're even going to talk entertainment. We'll have live guests right here on set with me. So, every day at noon, tune in, High Plains Today. We'll see you then. Weekdays, here on TV23. Welcome back. I have the privilege of being in the studio today with Adrienne Belinsky. She is a, she's an award-winning motivational speaker and author. She travels the world around speaking to kids in school. She'll, you'll speak Teenagers. to anybody. Teenagers. You'll speak to anybody. I will. You're not, I will. you're just not that shy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay, not really. All right, but when we, before I went to break, we were talking about your program and how you developed it. We, well, we started to get into how to, you developed it. So expand a little bit more on how you put all this together to, to present. Because, I mean, you're going into all these, you're going into small schools, you're going into big schools, you're going into different states. I mean, you grew up in Liberal, you live in Denver. It's a whole dichotomy of stuff. Mm -hmm. So how did, you, how did you put together this program? In a lot of ways, it kind of put itself together, but I, I say that I say that loosely because it does take focus and you know pen to paper and trial and error as well. And it doesn't it really doesn't matter where you're from in the country or if you're raised in rural America, urban America. What I'm starting to realize, teenagers or adults, we are all constantly fighting insecurity. And if we can learn to use that to our advantage and to silence it to a certain level or use it as a springboard, we can experience life on a whole different level. And what I work with both, with both teenagers and adults alike that a lot of people forget to realize is that success is paired with failure. You can't have one without the other. 
So sometimes when I go in and I'm in a very successful group of students, and, and this varies from school to school you go to. I mean, any adult can see this. Sometimes I'll talk more about how important it is to chase failure instead of just chasing success. You don't want to get stuck in failure, but if you don't fail, you don't know what you're capable of. So is that one of the first things that you do when you walk into an auditorium or a gymnasium, wherever it is you're speaking, is you're kind of going, I mean, you're actually, you're reading the I crowd? I size up the kids, yeah. Okay. I totally size up my audience. I kind of sit, I watch them come in, I watch their body language, I see what's going on. And then I have it set up to where I start with a whole lot of fun. And I have a whole selection of music. And I typically, and this mostly is just with teenagers, adults I don't think appreciate it the same. <laughs> um, I pull about eight kids, eight young men up front, have them sit in chairs, and I serenade them with an old school uh, song. This morning I started with Ain't No Mountain High Enough. And we have a great time. The crowd has fun. Sometimes the crowd starts singing with us. The boys turn red. But I get to feel what kind of audience I have while I'm doing something that I love. And so during that three-minute song where I'm dancing with them and having a good time, I know where my launch point is. So a lot of people think I'm just singing and having fun. Yes, I am. But I'm also but, seeing okay. kind of where the attitude is, where the mindset is, and, and how I'm going to jump in to a 60-minute long program. And other than that, it, it ends up going down the same road. But how you catch an audience at the beginning is very important. It's first impression. And it means something. Okay, so say it's, you walk into a school, uh, any school in America, and the crowd is all, hey, uh, well, you know, and the football team just got beat 100 to nothing, and et cetera, et cetera. You know that you're going to have kind of a melancholy crowd. So how do you start that? I mean, how do you lead them into, all right, listen to what I'm saying. Everything's going to be okay. Well, typically it's not that difficult. And you do loosen people up when they see you're having fun. You're not nervous, you're having fun. Um, if, I'm, if I'm in a group that has had some recent failure, we talk about why that's a great thing. And you actually know, okay, here's where my limitations are, now what am I going to do to move beyond it? So I take that and put the positive twist to it. Okay. And let them see the good in it. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it, there's an art to it. Okay, there's so I have to come to one of your presentations. I don't know why you weren't there this morning, Chris. I was doing a show. <laughs> <laughs> there, there really is an art to it. And then, and then I jump straight in. If we have time to jump into this, I give them four choices they get to make every single day. And they truly are choices okay. that you make. Such as? Uh, the first one is that, that I really focus on is whatever you want in life, you have to say it out loud. And so you have the choice on whether or not you're going to continually internalize it and it's always just going to grow internally or if you're actually going to put it out there. Okay. Because when you put it out there, whether you say it out loud or write it down, you're taking ownership in it. And if you find somebody that you respect, and I tie this all to a story of when I was growing up, you find someone you respect, once you say it is that of what you want, they're now holding you accountable, which leads you into your second choice of how determined are you going to be to make that become your reality. So it constantly grows, but it all comes back to you've got to get it from inside to outside. Okay, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. All right, so what are the other things that you, and okay, that's now, let's stay on these four things. Okay. All right. Now, you've got, you've got them to the point of, okay, if you want to do something, say it out loud, write it down, see it every day, hold yourself accountable. Uh-huh. All right, then you go... Then we move on to dedication. Okay. And what does dedication look like? But I give them real life examples, not just of me, but of, of people that our society admires and what that actually looks like in their lives so that it's not just some random girl showing up pre <laughs> preaching these four choices. You can actually see it. I pull on people like J.K. Rowling, um, Stephen King, Dr. Seuss, we've got Walt Disney. Um, we have big pop culture icons and their stories are incredible. So once you say it out loud, your second choice is determination. 
And then we move into the third choice, which is attitude. And you can't see the first two through without a positive attitude. So they all start working together. And we build into the first, fourth choice is perseverance. But what does that look like when life hits you between the eyes? And when it throws you off a horse or something, it said, how did you and, and your foot, huh? and your foot, right your foot yeah. pops off. And yeah. I, I get real, 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 <laughs> real, real fast. Because, okay. you know, I lived, Chris, for a while to where I couldn't go to the bathroom by myself. I couldn't I shower by myself. You were in a hyperbaric chamber. My dream was yeah. to be a dancer, and, and, and well, yes. I, I explode a balloon with them, and that was my dream that exploded. Okay. And what do you do with that? All right. Well, what do you do with it? All right. You, you, we're going to take a break, and when you come back, we come back. I'm going to tell you what you do with it. You're going to tell us what you're going to do with it. Yeah. All right. Stick around, Adrian. I'll be back right after this. Hi, I'm Chris Jewell, host of High Plains Today, a 30-minute news and information program that airs at noon weekdays right here on TV23. Hey, do you think you have an idea for something that would make a great segment? Somebody that would make a great interview? What about a community event that needs highlighting? Let us know here at the station. Email us, news at kdgltv.com. And welcome back. She is Adrian Belinsky. She is an award-winning motivational speaker, author, extraordinaire. And we've been talking about the four things that you present when you're, when you're speaking. And we've gotten up to perseverance. And I kind of cut you off because we had to pay for this. Um, <laughs> but perseverance is, share more about the perseverance because that's when it gets real. And you said this is when it gets real. Not real, but real, real. Real, real because yeah. of your accident and when life throws things at you, how you persevere to carry on with these goals you set. Well, and it's important to know that I tie this to students' lives. Um, I, I get into some nitty gritty, pretty passionate uh, with all of our kids that feel caught between parents who aren't getting along. Um, they're in the midst of a divorce or they've got some substance abu abuse issues at home. Um, meet a lot of kids that are fighting cancer in my, in my journey. And so what does it look like when you're really faced with adversity? And what I love about the word perseverance is nobody can define it for you. You have to define perseverance for yourself. And I have figured out that the way you, when you hit rock bottom, you have the opportunity to not only define perseverance, to, but to find out what your character is truly built upon. And the way I pulled myself back up by my own bootstraps with my particular challenge was I started pulling on these items that I had taught before my injury of you got to say it out loud what you want. You've got to have an unrelenting determination to see it through and your attitude is what's going to keep you going. And so I jump in with them and I'm like when I lost it all, I, I started dreaming real big Chris and, and my big dream was not to just be a dancer and not to just be able to walk on my own two feet, but to be able to walk without a limp. That became my new dream. And so I said it out loud, and then I, I took the time to be determined every day to start doing the research. And it took about six years before I found the doctor who had the cutting edge technology that the medical industry was looking at saying, we don't know if this is gonna work, but we need volunteers. And my attitude allowed me to step forward and say, you know what, I'll be that person who does it. And in and of itself, you learn the definition of perseverance. Okay, it's so really that, a beautiful thing. Is that when you had? I mean, going through that, building all the way up to mm -hmm. your ankle replacement. Correct, and I talk about it, and I'm like some girl from Southwest Kansas. The medical industry is watching to see how she's going to do because Chris, I'm sitting here with a pain level of zero, and I walk without a limp today. You do, and I do. You know, and it's watching you. Grow it's really up, cool. Watching you grow. Believe it or not, but this gal, she used to do point ballet. I did. And she was pretty darn good at it, too. Thank you. And, Thank you. And then she discovered she could sing. Yes. And so, and she's learning guitar. I don't know how that's going. But, <laughs> you know, you've done all these things. And, and then to be, have that tragic accident where, okay, folks, you have to read the book and you have to understand your ankle. I mean, your foot was like this far from being gone. 
it pretty much was severed from my leg. Yeah. And, and before we run out of time, I think one of the important parts is, is one thing that I really drive home with teenagers especially is to grab a hold of this adversity, fight to get through it. I mean, you have to fight for this. But if you take that adversity, you can package that up and put it inside of your new dream, and it will serve you so much better than you could ever imagine. Because without all of this, without the loss of this dance dream, which I really don't even see as lost anymore, I've, I've learned so much. I learned to say it out loud. I learned the dedication and the attitude and now the perseverance. I took all that and put it inside my new dream of, yes, now I walk without a limp, but I want to motivate people and I want to work with teenagers. And I can't do that without experiencing the failure of something else. All right. And it's, you put all big. that into a giant program that it's, you can it runs, deliver. It runs to, 60 minutes. And, and you can do, it doesn't have to be schools. It can be It, it works great for yeah, adults, adults as well. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So I and, just like the teenagers because they're hyper. You need to get to her <laughs> website, adrianbalinski.com. Please, please stop by and, and, and look at, check it you out. Can, you can find out all kinds of stuff. And she's coming back to Kansas in April. So if you have a local school district or whatever, conference, Rotary, it doesn't matter. She'll come present. I would love to. I would absolutely love to. And so get on her website and get her booked for April because we get her back here in Southwest Kansas so that I can go see one of her presentations and we can have her back in studio and gab some more because she always has a ton to talk about. Can I tell you something special before we close? You can, but it's got to be quick. If you go to my website and it's the first time you go, a a pop-up will come up and you can read the first... I think it's seven chapters for free. Um, it's part of the deal with Amazon. So go check it out. You don't even you don't even have Blood, to buy sweat, it. Blood, and it's a, it's a cool book, and it's got a really cool cover on it, too. There's a story behind it, that, but we don't of, have time for that. Oh, but we could keep going. No, we can't. Brian's going to be yelling at me in a second. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. Adrian, thanks for coming by. I always love seeing you. And there you have it. And thanks for joining us on this special edition of High Flames Today. Keep up to date with the latest information from TV23 on our Facebook page, ADGL-TV.